Hey, what's up guys, it's Ryan, and welcome back to another highly requested video. I've been so excited to make this load order for you guys to celebrate 200 episodes of our Top 5 Mods of the Week series. That's 200 weeks of modding, and that's just absolutely mind-boggling to me. That the series have gone on this long, that you guys keep enjoying it as it comes out, and just the overall quality and just overall fun that I have while making the series has just always gone up and never went down. So why not build a huge load order that features a lot of the mods that I've covered in my series, as well as my take on what the best mods are and where to place them in your load order. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're gonna to build a load order that covers every single area in the game so that whenever you load up Skyrim for the first time after installing this load order, everything is going to be completely changed. I'm also well aware that this is a very lengthy video. So if you don't wanna watch the entire thing and you just want the load order, at least go to these timestamps in the video here because there is some important information to note whenever downloading some of these mods. So if you are gonna skip out on the video, just go to these timestamps real quick so that you don't miss any important information. But before we jump into the load order itself, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if you're looking for a better alternative to those gas station energy drinks that are really bad for you, check out Gamersups and use my link down below. You can also use RTD for a 10% discount on all your drinks. And as a special thank you for 200 episodes and this huge load order video, Gamersups has allowed me to do a giveaway where they're giving away two free tubs of Gamersups. And the only thing that you have to do to enter is subscribe down below and leave a comment of your favorite mod. I'm going to be checking your comments and responses regularly, so if you want to let me know what your favorite mod is and have a chance to win some gamer subs, go ahead and do so. I'd love to hear what your favorite mods are. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into the load order. Now I'm sure you guys know if you've built a load order in the past, that there's some steps you have to do before we start adding mods to our giant list. The first thing we're going to have to do is clear our reserve space. You can clear your reserve space by selecting Skyrim on your main Xbox dashboard and then going down to the Manage Game and Add-On section. Under there you'll find a reserve space that you can press A on and it'll clear the reserve space. The reason that we do this is because if you've been downloading a lot of mods in the past and then you delete them all, you'll still have some memory stored in your load order from those previous mods even though they've already been deleted. This is why sometimes you'll notice that you have enough space for a mod but it'll still tell you that there's not enough space required. In order to get around this, we're going to clear the reserve space, which is going to completely clear out all of your mods, as well as all the ghost space as well. Once you've successfully cleared your reserve space, you can open Skyrim back up, and under the mod section, you notice that we have nothing. We have a clean slate that's ready to start a new load order, so let's sit back, relax, and enjoy as we once again transform Skyrim into a true RPG. So starting off with the first mod in this giant list, we have the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. This is a mod that I pretty much can't play Skyrim without, and it's a mod that's featured at the top of every single load order I've ever made. This is a comprehensive bug fixing mod that fixes hundreds of gameplay, quest, NPC, object, item, text, and placement bugs, and we all know that Bethesda releases some buggy games, so it's important to download this mod and fix all of those unwanted bugs before we jump in and add a whole bunch of new features to the game. Now this is also how I'm gonna be covering every single mod in this load order. We're just gonna go through one by one. I'm gonna give you guys a brief description of the mod, tell you what it does and what I like about it, and then we can move on to the next mod. Because if I sat here and told you everything about every mod in this list, we'd be sitting here for hours. So to avoid wasting your time, I'm just gonna give you guys a brief little description of the mod, and then we can just move on to the next one. And that mod in question is the Improved Telekinesis mod, which is a simple, lightweight addition of adding body support to the Telekinesis spell. And that's really it. That's all this mod does, it just makes it so that you can pick people up with the telekinesis spell, which I think is something that should have been in the game from the get-go. And I also don't want you guys to get a little confused because we have a spell mod this high up in the list. This is actually a spell mod that's also a core mod. You'll quickly learn as you download more and more mods that some mods have a different type of description or some mods fit into a different category, but this is considered a core file that changes a big part of the game, that being the physics in Skyrim, so that you can use it with the telekinesis spell. So it actually won't allow allow you to put it anywhere else in the load order other than right here. You can try as much as you want, but it'll always warp back up to the top, so you can just leave it here and just don't get confused about that because it is just a core mod and it just has to go at the top of the list here. Moving on from the improved telekinesis mod, we have the Sanguise Oblivion font. And it was designed by the creator of the Sovngarde mod, which is another font overhaul that was also really well. So this is a very well done mod that just changes all of the text in the game, whether it be in menus and books and more, just all the text in the game has been changed to be the Oblivion version, and I really like it. 
After that mod, we have the 60 FPS menus mod, which is a mod that I assure you, once you download, you will not remove from your load order. It makes it so that whenever you're going through the menus and selecting shouts, as well as items, equipping armor, etc., all of the menus are going to go a lot faster and be in 60 frames per second. And if you do download this mod and you notice a big change and then end up deleting it, you'll then notice how the original menus in the vanilla game of Skyrim are just so slow. So this is a must have mod for me, the 60 FPS menus mod, it's just a perfect mod for this list. Next up we have the Skyrim main menu replacer, which replaces the Skyrim dragon emblem and soundtrack of the main menu with a new background image and soundtrack from the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. It also has a snowfall animation effect that also goes over the main menu. Now that we've fixed up the main menu, it's important to jump over to the loading screens and fix them up next with the TESG load screen replacer. This is one of my favorite load screen replacer mods because it features 205 high resolution screenshots that have been processed to resemble paintings. And this means that every time you go through a door, enter a cave, or just have a loading screen pop up, you have 205 pictures that have a possibility of showing there. I just think this is a whole lot better than the original vanilla games loading screens where they were just a black screen with white smoke coming up. Now that we've changed up the main menus and the load screens in Skyrim, it's important to jump over to the music and add some new music to listen to whenever you're exploring the world. These two mods that I've chosen are the music of Tamriel and the Chapter 2 Jeremy Soul inspired music, which are the two best music mods that I think I've ever covered in Skyrim. The music of Tamriel mod adds the new soundtrack from Morrowind and Oblivion to the overworld of Skyrim, using assets from the Dragonborn DLC and Beyond Skyrim Bruma. This means that you'll hear Morrowind and Oblivion soundtracks as well as the Skyrim soundtracks whenever you're exploring Skyrim. And then the Chapter 2 Jeremy Soul inspired music adds an hour of custom made content that is inspired by Jeremy Soul, of course. Jeremy Soul being the main music composer for all of the music in Oblivion and Skyrim, this person was inspired to make music with his techniques to make a whole new soundtrack and add an hour of new music to Skyrim without it feeling out of place, and it definitely is the best music that I've heard while exploring Skyrim in a very long time. Trust me, you will not regret downloading these two music mods, they are just perfect for Skyrim. And sticking along the same lines as music and audio mods, we have the Quieter Dungeons and Caves mod. This mod removes those useless, distracting, and unreal noises so that you now hear all the natural sounds more clearly in a cave. It makes it so all the caves are a lot quieter so that you'll hear the water drip, the footsteps, enemy footsteps, dust falling from the ceiling, distant conversations, enemies breathing, creatures growling, and more. So this is a perfect mod to add to your list if you want to perfect your dungeon and cave exploring experience. And now that we've fixed up all the audio in the game, we can move on to the HUD, and my favorite HUD mod is the Sky HUD Oblivion preset, as well as the Pastel Map Markers version. This is an all-in-one mod that includes the Sky HUD mod, as well as the Oblivion preset, which makes it so that your health, magic, and stamina are at the bottom left corner of your screen, and your ammo shows up in the bottom right, and it gives you a dot crosshair. But not only does it do that, it also makes it so all of your map markers are nice and colorful, instead of just being the black and white that they were in the original game of Skyrim. Now that we've changed the music and menus in Skyrim, it's important to take a step back and look at the physics and overall how Skyrim works. First we'll start off with the physics mods, and starting us off we have the realistic ragdolls and force, realistic impacts, and realistic death physics, which are my three favorite physics mods because the realistic ragdolls and force mod reduces the amount of force for ragdolls, and it also makes it so ragdolls are less stiff and won't just go flying all over the place. It just makes it so that the ragdolls and just overall physics in the game feel a lot more realistic. And then whenever it comes to the realistic impacts mod, you have the dragon landings and overall bigger creatures actually have more realistic power attacks. This means that dragons can send soldiers up into the air, mammoths can make it so that you go ragdoll and go flying, so that these more powerful and heavier creatures actually pack that big punch that you know they have. And finally, the realistic death physics mod makes it so that people, whenever they die, don't do that weird spinning animation. They actually just fall lifeless, and it just makes it a lot more realistic. This is also the part where I stop the load order because it's one of those timestamps that we've talked about in the beginning of the video, because the realistic death physics has one small incompatibility with this list. With the realistic death physics mod enabled, whenever you start up the game, later on we have the alternate start mod, but if you are going to do the original startup where you go to Helgen and you know you go down onto the chopping block and all that stuff, if you're going to start Skyrim off that way and go to Helgen and do the original vanilla start, make sure that realistic death physics is disabled until after you leave Helgen. 
We do this because with the realistic death physics enabled and you go through the vanilla start, you actually get stuck on the chopping block for some reason. But this list was made for more of a role playing character, so we are just going to use the alternate start mod later. So if you don't plan on doing the vanilla start, just ignore this part. But if you do plan on going to Helgen and doing the vanilla startup sequence, make sure that realistic death physics is disabled until after you leave Helgen. Once you leave Helgen, just make a quick save, back out, and go and re-enable this mod, and everything will be perfectly fine. Now that that's out of the way, we can move on to the Essentials Ragdoll on Knockdown mod, which is the final physics mod on this list, and it just makes it so the Essential NPCs, or the people that can't die, whenever they go to zero health or go to their knockdown state, instead of going down on the ground and just like coughing like they originally do in Skyrim, they'll actually go limp and Ragdoll like they did die. They will eventually get back up though, so it just makes it a little bit more realistic that the essential NPC just got knocked out instead of just put down on the ground where they're coughing. Following that, we have the Cheat Room mod, which is a mod that I don't necessarily use for cheating. It's more of a mod that I always have in my load order just in case a problem happens in Skyrim, because regardless of if you use mods or not, or if you're playing in the vanilla game or not, there are glitches that can happen, and you can get stuck in corners, stuck behind rocks, or just have something happen that just kind of soft locks your game. That's what the Cheat Room mod's for. The Cheat Room mod adds a bunch of new spells into the game, as well as a new room with every item in the game, where you can actually get yourself out of problems, teleport out of situations that you don't want to be in, you might end up in a situation where you can't get out, and the cheat room's there for you. Next we can move on to our armor and clothing mods, and starting us off we have the face masks of Skyrim. This mod adds 8 new color variant masks that you can wear on your character, and this include black, blue, brown, green, purple, red, white, and yellow. You can also find these scarves on bandits throughout your travels and whenever you're clearing out ruins and bandit camps, and I think that that's really awesome that they also put them on the characters in Skyrim as well. And the same thing applies for the next mod on our list, which is the Cloaks of Skyrim. This mod adds over 100 cloaks and cape variants to the world, and it adds them not only as a craftable option, but also into leveled lists, so that you can find them on enemies and around the world as well. It also adds designs for every major faction, including guards and the Greybeards, as well as unique cloaks and capes hidden around the world for you to find. Next up we have our huge armor mod, which is the Amidianborn Book of Silence. Now this really sets the standard in terms of Skyrim textures. It covers all of the armors in the game, such as the light armor, fur studded in hide, as well as the heavy armors, that being iron, steel, blades, dwarven, orcish, elven, ebony, draugr, nordplate, daedric, and companion and wolf armors, as well as the ebony and ebony mail, skyforge, glass, and many other armors have been changed to have high quality 2k textures. This is one of the best armor mods that I've used, and it doesn't cover too much space for how much it actually covers in the game. And since we changed all of the armor in Skyrim, it's important to move over to the clothing and cover them as well so they don't seem out of place, so we have the Variations Armor and Clothing mod up next. This mod replaces the following items, that being the Archmage, Mage, Barkeep, Chef, Beggar, and Prisoner outfit, as well as the Blacksmith, Farmer, Mourner, Vampire Simple, and Fine outfits, Merchants, Monks, Mythic Dawns, and more people that have different types of clothing in the game have new and remastered clothing textures so that they fit alongside the Amidian Born Book of Silence mod. With these two mods going hand in hand, you're going to have the most beautiful and realistic looking armors and clothing, but there is still one set that we haven't touched yet, and that's the guard armors. So that's why up next we have the light guard armor overhaul, which covers all of the armors for all of the guards in every single city. Moving on to one of our final armor mods, we have the black leather sheath mod, which is a very simple mod that just makes it so that the sheath that you hold your sword in is just black instead of brown, so that it matches a lot of the other armors that are covered in the Amidian Born Book of Silence mod, and it just blends in a lot better. Now we can move on to our perk mods and overall stat changing mods, and starting us off we have the Ordinator Perks of Skyrim mod, which adds over 469 new perks and enables many new viable character builds, it's highly compatible, it's lightweight on scripts, and it overhauls all of the perk trees in Skyrim to increase the depth and fun of character building. Following that we have the Odin Skyrim Magic Overhaul, which makes magic in Skyrim what it should have been from the get-go. It improves and fixes vanilla Skyrim spells and makes scrolls and staves viable. It also adds new spells, scrolls, and staves inspired by previous Elder Scrolls magic, and the new content is balanced and seamlessly integrated into the game. You're also going to need the Odin Ordinator compatibility patch to run underneath this mod, just so that Ordinator and Odin run together properly and have no issues. Next up we have the final spell mod on this list, which is the Placeable Statics mod, which is another mod that I can't live without, because it allows you to redecorate your house any way that you'd like. 
You can grab and place furniture using two simple intuitive spells, and grab and move furniture and statics as if they were clutter. You can fix them in place and act like they did just before before you move them, meaning if you pick up a chest and move it to a different location in your house, you can still use it as a chest in that new location, which I think is one of the best things included with this mod. You can move pretty much any type of furniture that you have, and as well bring in furniture from outside your house so that you have more furniture in your house too. Placeable statics is a definite must have for me in terms of customizing my house because it allows me to organize anything that I want in any way that I seem fit, and it's also very easy to use too, so why wouldn't you want a mod like this? Following that we have the Summer Mist Enchantment of Skyrim which adds over 120 new enchantments into the game that can be bought, looted, and applied to custom items, and it also makes many improvements to the vanilla enchantments in the game. After that we have the Andromeda Unique Standing Stones of Skyrim which replaces the mundane vanilla standing stone effects with two new abilities per stone enabling many new character builds. And upon discovering all of the stones, each of them also grants a unique power. So there's so much to get in terms of standing stones in Skyrim now, and they're not just some place that you go to right outside of Helgen and then just completely forget about. Now since Ordinator, like I said, adds over 469 new perks to Skyrim, we're gonna need some perk point mods as well, so that we can actually cover the ground of those 469 perks without having to be level 50 to see everything. These mods include the 20% more perk point mods, which makes it so that every 5 levels you receive an additional perk point, and then following that we have the perk points at skill levels 50, 75, and 100, which I always thought was very lackluster in the original game of Skyrim. Whenever you'd hit 50 in a certain skill, or 75 or 100, nothing would really happen. You wouldn't really get anything. So this actually adds it so that whenever you get to 50, 75, or 100 in a skill, you'll get a new message that appears that says your mastery in this certain skill has given you a new perk point and then you can use that on any of the new perks that are featured in Ordinator. Finally, we have the Dragon Souls to Attributes mod, which makes it so if you have any Dragon Souls on your person, you can convert either 1, 5, 10, or 20 souls at a time to actually convert them into perk points or maybe even attribute points as well. Say you're running low on health, or maybe every time you leveled up you threw it into magic and you're regretting that, slay some dragons and then come over to this altar and put some points into health so you can use your Dragon Souls for stuff other than shouts that you may not have fully unlocked yet. After that we have the Unread Books Glow mod, which does exactly what you may think. It just makes it so that books which you have not read yet will have a visible glow to it. And when you read a book for the first time, the glow will disappear. All of these unread books will have an asterisk next to their name and attracts many books from any mod or DLC. Spell tomes are green, skill books are red, and quest books are a regular blue. And there's also an in-game configuration spell, which is very useful if you don't want every single book on every shelf to glow blue. You can actually set it so that only skill books glow, only spell tomes glow, or any other book will glow. And the one that I use is just skill books so that I know which ones to pick up. Now we can move over to our camera editing mods, and starting us off we have the highly requested dynamic camera mod. This is one of the best camera mods that I think is in Skyrim because of just how much customization comes with it. You can change your FOV and what every angle for each different position you have, whether it be if you're using a ranged weapon, if you're using a regular melee weapon, if you just have your fists, or if you're using spells, you can change all of those camera angles to have different settings so that every time you change weapons, your camera angle will also change. So it's definitely the most customizable camera mod, and staying along the same lines up next we have the horse camera tweak mod, which makes the camera whenever you're riding a horse a lot more closer and slightly offset to the right over your shoulder, and the camera for mounted combat has been left alone, because it's just perfect. Now it's time to move on to our weapon mods, and starting us off we have the archery tweaks plus mod, which increases the speed of all arrow and bolt projectiles by 42%, and makes them fly further before dropping to the ground. These settings have been tested and fine tuned over the years to achieve what I feel is a pretty perfect compromise between realism and good gameplay. Following that you'll need the archery tweaks ordinator patch, just so the ordinator's trick errors will work properly with the archery tweaks plus mod. Up next you have the crosshair aligned crossbow aim, which is one of my favorite aiming mods whenever it comes to weapons. This mod greatly improves the first person aiming with crossbows, and it's an animation replacer that's essentially an aim down iron sights mod but for Skyrim. It takes the current Fallout 3 shooting mechanic that's in Skyrim, and it makes it into the Fallout New Vegas aim down sight view, which means you can actually aim down your sights perfectly now. Next up we have the Belt Fasten Quivers mod, which repositions quivers and crossbow bolts to your waist. 
It also makes minor modifications to the placement of bows and crossbows on your back to avoid as much clipping as possible in this new position. It also makes it very nice to look at whenever you're wearing a cape and having these new arrows along your side, which makes it so that the arrows don't clip through the cape so you can't see any of the cape at all. I really like the Belt Fasten Quivers mod because you can wear your cape as well as your bow and other weapons, and they actually look really nice on your character when you have everything equipped. Moving on, we have the Royal Armory mod, which makes it so all of the important people of Skyrim, that being essential NPCs and just unique people that you meet throughout the game, will also have unique items and armor as well as weapons, and the main goal of this mod is to add immersion by giving the most important characters of Skyrim weapons to match their status. So you no longer see Ulfric Stormcloak charging into battle with a regular steel sword, he'll have a special sword with unique enchantments. This also carries over to many of the other NPCs that you meet throughout the game, and on top of adding the Royal Armory, let's also add a Heavy Armory too, which is the next mod on our list. This mod adds over 100 new lore-friendly weapons and introduces new weapon types like spears, halberds, and short swords, and as well expands on some of the more limited sets like Silver, Imperial, Forsworn, and Draugr. If you're looking for some new weapons to wield and you like immersion, then the Heavy Armory mod is the mod for you. And moving on to the final weapon mod in our list, we have the Throwing Weapons Light Updated version. This mod includes throwing knives, throwing axes, javelins, oil pots, frost potion grenades, and smoke bombs to use and throw throughout your travels and find on other people as well. So be careful going into your next bandit camp because they might have a smoke bomb or a frost potion grenade that you're not expecting. This next set of mods is dedicated to changing the weather in Skyrim. My top three are the Surreal Lighting, Eternal Sunshine, and Far Better Sun mods, which alter the contrast, brightness, and saturation for the outdoors, make the sun a lot better looking, as well as make the daytime in Skyrim a lot better to look at as well. And then after that you have the Enhanced Night Skyrim, which changes the night sky without affecting performance and adds high resolution stars in greater quantity, as well as a giant nebula that will always be there, making the nights beautiful in Skyrim. And then of course after that we have my favorite weather mod, which is the Mythical Ages Weather Overhaul. This is a complete rework to the weathers and lighting with a fantasy theme. There's also a larger variety of weathers compared to vanilla weathers, and a preset system as well that can be used to change the graphical style. You'll receive a power spell upon loading into the game called Options Mythical Ages Preset, and once you load in and cast the spell, you'll get to choose from a bunch of different presets to change how your game looks. And if you want to know the one that I use, it's the preset called Sharp. Now we can move on to our NPC effects and overhauls, and starting us off we have the Enhanced Blood Textures mod. This mod allows for bloodier combat experiences with higher resolution and more detailed textures, and there's also additional features such as kill move animation spasms, blood drops whenever low on health, damage based blood amount, blood pools, green blood for spiders, and even oil for machines. And following that mod, we have the Diverse Skyrim mod, which adds over 300 new NPCs with unique appearances to the vanilla leveled lists for added variety and racial diversity while staying lore friendly. Stats, levels, items, and abilities are entirely handled by the vanilla mechanisms, which ensures that this mod will work great with other mods that also do the same thing. Now it's time for our main NPC changing overhaul, and that's Lean Skyrim NPC Overhaul making every person you meet in Skyrim have a new face and actually look better, as well as look more realistic in the game as well. And you're also going to need the Divine Skins and Bodies for Men and Women mod, which is the body version of this Lean Skyrim NPC overhaul. Lean Skyrim NPC overhaul just covers the faces of all the NPCs, this is going to cover all of the bodies and make them look a lot more realistic. And if we're changing all the bodies and looks of all the men and women in Skyrim, it's best to change the way that the children look too, so they don't look out of place. So following that mod, we have the RS Children Overhaul, which modifies the existing child races in the game to use custom assets, textures, head meshes, and body meshes, so that all of the faces of all the children in the game originally existing in Skyrim will have a new remastered texture and not every single kid will look exactly the same like they did in the original game. Coming up next on our list, we have the Beards mod, which replaces all of the vanilla Skyrim beard textures with completely new, high resolution, and hand painted from scratch textures. This is done to provide the best photorealistic look possible, and the aim is to stay true to the original look of the vanilla textures, but to provide a more natural and realistic look. And you're also going to want to follow that up with the Darts Hair Colors mod, which adds over 150 new hair colors to use in the custom create a character. And then our final NPC changing mod is called the Eyes of Beauty 2020 edition, which adds realistic and lore friendly eye textures that replace all of the eyes, including the player and NPCs. This includes humans, elves, orcs, Khajiits, and Argonians for both male and female characters, and all these textures are very high resolution. 
Now we're going to move on to some of our creature adding mods and starting us off we have the Argonian Hatchlings and the Khajiit Caravan Kitten mods. These mods run hand in hand with each other and they just basically add the children of those respective races into Skyrim. Have you ever wondered why there's no Argonian children running around or Khajiit children running around? Well now that's completely changed and you can actually find the children of these two races wandering around trying to sell goods and actually being with their parents like they should be. All of you hunters are going to love this next mod on our list and it's the Real Wildlife mod. It adds over 490 new variants of natural wildlife to Skyrim with revised AI and wildlife faction interaction, 16 new lore friendly diseases, 45 new ingredients, 21 new foods, and 21 new recipes. Following that we're going to pick up the Convenient Horses mod, which is a mod that's been built from the ground up to radically change the way you interact with and use horses. You now have mounted harvesting of ingredients, mounted interaction with people and corpses, mounted combat horse charges, horse stabling, naming and quick swapping, as well as a horse encumbrance system and mobile storage. You know in most of my playthroughs I don't really use horses, but the Convenient Horses has definitely changed my mind on that because they're extremely useful now. Moving on, we have the Talkative Dragons mod, which reuses some of the vanilla voice lines to make dragons speak during combat, so they feel like more sentient creatures instead of just mere beasts. If you notice, whenever you fight your first dragon outside the Whiterun Watchtower, the dragon will actually speak to you, but then later on, you don't actually get to hear any more of those voice lines as you fight other dragons. This mod changed that so the other dragons that you do fight out in your travels will also talk and taunt you as well. And if a dragon's going to be taunting you, they're going to need a thick layer of skin in order to back up these statements. So that's why up next we have the Tempers Mystical Dragon Recolors mod. This mod completely recolors all of the dragons that you encounter in the game, such as Aduin, who is much darker with red accents, Odaving, which is more true to his name and is now white and red, the regular dragon is now a pale green, the blood dragon is red, the elder dragon is now a bright orange, the ancient dragon has been changed to green with a little bit of a mossy style on him, so a lot of these dragons that you're going to come across are going to be a lot more intimidating and have more high quality textures. And what's the point of adding new creatures into the game if we don't have a bestiary to keep track of all of them? That's where the Skyrim Bestiary mod comes in. This mod adds 63 new craftable bestiary books covering all the creatures in Vanilla Skyrim and its DLCs. Completing each bestiary will grant a 10% bonus to attack and spell power against the creature in question. These bestiary books are crafted at a tanning rack using the materials that you get from killing that specific animal. So if you pick up 10 wolf pelts, you can actually make the wolf bestiary, which will then grant you an extra bonus the next time you go out and kill some wolves. Following that, we have the Improved Bandits Complete Bandit Overhaul, which completely overhauls the bandits by modifying their gear, stats, and perks. And it also makes the attributes and perks of bandits to be completely rebalanced, so that the strength of bandits now increases more consistently across levels, and low-level bandits will now pose an adequate challenge. Next up, we're going to focus on some of our animation mods, and I get a lot of questions on what my favorite animation mod combination is, and that's got to be the Dual Sun Animation Replacer, the one-handed version, the Spoiler Animation Overhaul, as well as the Refined Movement mod. These three mods together cover all the vanilla animations and change them up to be new and remastered ones, such as the one-handed and two-handed, magic cast, bow and crossbow, sneak poses, running, blocking, hand animations, stand animations, and even the jump animation. All of these have been changed and all three of these mods running together will bring you the best and cleanest looking animations that I think I've ever had. After we add those, we can move on to the Wear Multiple Rings mod, which does exactly what you may think. It makes it so that you can wear multiple rings instead of just one, because you've got 10 fingers, right? But this mod is perfect, especially for enchanters who want to get an extra buff. Just enchant a bunch of rings and put them on your character so that you have a big stat increase. Moving on, we have one of my favorite magic mods in this list, and that's called the Sustain Magic mod. What this mod does is it makes it so, let's say you're going into a cave and you don't have any torches, yeah you can cast the candlelight spell over and over again every 60 seconds, but what if you could just cast the candlelight spell one time, and it just minuses your magicka by however much it takes to keep casting the candlelight spell. This would make it so that you can carry a shield as well as a sword and have the candlelight spell at all times instead of having to switch through your quick menu and keep equipping candlelight over and over again. And it also applies to other spells such as summoning things. Let's say I summon a flame at your notch. Instead of summoning it for 60 seconds, it'll actually summon it permanently until it dies, but it will reduce my magicka for how much it would cost to summon a flame at your notch. So you do have to be careful and manage your magicka wisely with this mod. Next up we have our section where we fit all of our graphical overhauls, and starting us off we have the Skyland All-in-One mod of course. 
This is one of the best graphical overhauls that's all in one so that everything is included in one package. And this includes farmhouses, Markarth, Riften, Solitude, Whiterun, Winterhold, the road signs, Standing Stones, the Dark Brotherhood door, caves, Dwemer ruins, Imperial forts and dungeons, mines, and many, many other places in the game have new graphics and look absolutely amazing with this mod. And you're also going to want to follow it up with the Skyland all-in-one patch so that Skyland runs smoothly with this load order and you don't have any frame drops or issues. After that we have the Divine SMIM mod, which covers even more of the graphics in the game. I'm talking the smaller things such as the alchemy table, apples, tomatoes, bread, soup, carriages, cave lamps, chandeliers, common chairs, tables, furnitures, display cases, and racks. We're talking the enchanting workbenches, hand carts, hanging rings, honey pots, and several of the other furniture items in the game now have new and remastered textures as well. But why stop there? After that we have Alsopa's HD compilation, which covers everything that wasn't in Skyland or the Divine SMIM mod. This includes the Akatosh amulets, the anvils, grindstones, and workbenches, as well as the smelter, the mead barrel, the burial urn, white run streets, unique coin bags, HD paper, and keys. Elsopa's not done there though, because after that we have the HD unique handmade signs, which changes all of these signs for every single shop that you encounter in the game, so that they actually feel like their own unique location. You know, of course you walk up and see the winking skeever outside of Solitude, but now it'll have a picture of a skeever that's actually winking, as well as every other shop will have its own custom sign that makes it feel like a real place. And then following that we have Alsopa's final mod in this list, which is the new enchantment textures. This just makes it so whenever you enchant a weapon or find an enchanted weapon, the enchantment glow will actually be a lot brighter and actually reflect on what the enchantment that you have is. So if I have an Absorb Stamina enchantment, I'm going to have a Glowing Green Sword, as well as if I have a Absorb Health, I'm going to have a Red Sword. So it really makes each weapon that you craft and create unique in its own way. And speaking of unique, we have the Radiant Unique Potions and Poisons mod up next, which makes each potion and poison bottle unique, not just in color and bottle pattern, but also the label and adornments as well. Bottles now have their own labels that reflect what the potion and poison does, as well as reflect some of the ingredients that go into the making of that specific potion. Many bottles also have a glowing effect to enhance the aesthetic appearance and bring out the color and design. After that we can move on to changing our lockpicking UI with the lockpicking interface redone mod. This remakes the lockpicking interface with a 100% new model and HD texture, and now the lock is a lot bigger, occupying most of the screen space that otherwise would be wasted. Now if we're going to be picking locks to get our hands on some treasure, it's important to update the looks of the treasure as well. And we do this with the beautiful gold overhaul. This view textures a majority of the golden objects in the game, such as the Crown of Baron Zaya, all of the Thieves Guild quest items, such as urns, flagons, and model ships, Elder Scrolls, and coins, so that all the gold items in Skyrim feel valuable and actually look amazing too. But we're not always finding gold, sometimes we find some gemstones, so let's expand those with the Expanded Gemstones mod. This is the Vanilla Gems version, which just changes the original Vanilla Gems to be expanded and actually have more beautiful textures. And following that, you have the Expanded Gemstones plus 25 gems, which adds 25 new gems into the game, such as Quartz, Fluorite, Obsidian, Amber, White Opal, Jade, Turquoise, and even Lapis Lazuli gems into your game, so that you have so many new gems to find and more treasure to loot as well. Following that, we have the Medieval Torches for Skyrim, which is a medieval-style custom-made torture placer with a 2K texture, just so whenever you're going through caves, it looks a lot better. Moving on, we have the Elements All-in-1 1K mod, which is a merge of the Inferno overhaul and the Arctic overhaul into one mod. This changes all the fire effects in the game, such as spells, fireplaces, campfires, braziers, torches, candles, and creature fire attacks, as well as all the frost effects in the game, such as environmental effects and ice-type creatures, frost attacks, and more. Now you may have thought that we've covered all the items and graphics that we're going to be going over, but we actually forgot something, and that's the book covers of Skyrim. This book covers Skyrim mod is a high quality retexture of all the readable books, journals, and notes in Skyrim, and it gives each book and journal its own unique cover and adds many additional double-sided paper styles to the notes. To help distinguish skill books from other books, they also have a star added at the spine of the book as well. Following that we have the dust effects mod, which is a simple texture replacer for the dust effects in the game. You may think that this is a very small change, but it's actually required in this list because later on we have the ELFX Hardcore mod which makes all of our caves completely dark, and if you're inside of a very dark cave and you have the original dust effects, they're going to look like bubbles. But with this dust effect mod, it makes it actually look like dust instead of those bubbles that you would originally see in the vanilla game. And staying along the same lines as our effect mods, up next we have the Rash Shaders and Effects mod, which adds visual effects to the player and NPCs during certain conditions, such as weather. 
If it's raining outside, the player and NPC will get covered in a watery shader and droplet particles will fall from your body. Whenever it's snowing, you'll actually have you as well as other NPCs get covered in snow and snowflake particles. And if you jump into the water, you have bubbles come up when you're swimming. So with all these new shaders and effects that you can get on your character, it's just going to make it feel a lot more immersive. And we can also follow that up with the Dirt and Blood mod, which is a very similar mod to the Rash Shaders and Effects mod, but it makes it so that you can get dirty and bloody in combat now. There's now four stages of dirt that will progressively get your armor more and more dirty, and you'll actually be able to see it. You can see the dirt on your cape as well as your armor. Say you go through and you clear out an entire bandit camp and it's a bloody battle. Whenever you leave combat, the blood doesn't just go away, it actually stays there. But don't worry, it's very easy to clean off. All you have to do is jump into a body of water, or you can select the new power that you have that allows you to take a bath. With the Rash Shaders and Effects mod and Dirt and Blood mod in conjunction together, you're going to have the most immersive experience whenever it comes to getting your character dirty or just having particle effects come off of you. Next up, we can move on to our City Overhaul mods, and starting us off, we have my favorite, which is the Great City of Solitude. This truly expands on the grand capital of Skyrim by adding a bunch of new docks and shops, as well as new homes, new NPCs, and more to explore right on the outside of Solitude. And the reason why I like this so much is because Skyland already works on the inside of Solitude, so the Great City of Solitude only works on the exterior, making it so that they both work together properly and you have no issues. But you are going to want to add the Great City of Solitude USS EP patch after this mod, just so it works properly with the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. That's not all though whenever it comes to the Great Cities. Next up we have the Great City of Dragonbridge, the Great City of Dawnstar, and the Great City of Falkreath, as well as the Great City of Morthal after that. These four mods back to back will change all of these different areas in the game to have new and remastered textures as well as be built from the ground up in a new and unique way. Dragon Bridge is completely different, Dawnstar looks amazing, Falkreath is now completely open and a lot better looking, and Morthal just looks amazing as well. But who could forget about Whiterun? That's why up next we have the fortified Whiterun compatibility version, which aims to bring more realistic and logical defenses to our most beloved city. There's now stone walls with towers that surround the road up to the city, as well as wooden watchtowers that provide extra elevation for defense and serve as lookouts. This is a very good Whiterun overhaul that just covers the outskirts, because the interior we're going to work with the Whiterun City Full of Life mod, which is the next mod in our list. This mod adds loads of plant life and insects to make Whiterun come alive, and it's game crashing safe so you don't have to worry about anything, and it absolutely makes Whiterun look incredible. This is the Whiterun overhaul that I've used for the longest out of all of them that I've covered. And lastly, we're going to pick up the Better Skyforge mod, which is a simple mod to improve the Skyforge in Whiterun. This includes a smelter and armorer's table so that you no longer need to track down to Adrian's for everything, and it also adds a display rack for Skyforge weapons, because you'd want to show them off, right? And it just makes the Skyforge feel like a proper place to do blacksmith work now. Moving on, we have the Magical College of Winterhold mod, which removes that useless clutter, the cobwebs, barrels, and hay that was inside the college before, because is this a magical institute or a barn? This is also an overhaul aimed at giving the college a more professional and enchanted look, and it does a great job in doing so. Trust me, this mod makes the College of Winterhold actually feel like a college now. And on top of that, we can also add the immersive Winterhold College NPCs, which will make it feel even more like a college by adding more people that are studying there. We're talking new NPCs such as five novices and three mages, as well as a groundskeeper and guardians that protect the area around the college. Up next, we can add some new locations to explore to our load order, and starting us off, we have the Epic Crabs Lawbringer Plus. What this mod does is allow you to take over a location for a faction of your choice by clearing the enemies out and then replacing the initial banner with the faction you'd wish to take control of the fort. This includes all of the holds, stormcloaks, and imperials, as well as the other factions in the game. The areas this mod covers that you can actually take control over would be Banner Mist Tower, Bleak Falls Tower, Bleak Wind Bluff, as well as the Dragon Bridge Overlook and the Falkreath Watchtower, and many other forts and bandit camps that you'd find throughout the world of Skyrim. You can actually take control of these and have guards from the specific faction of your choice that you chose to claim the area, they later come in and actually guard the location itself, which I think is really awesome. Following that up, we have the More Bandit Camps mod, which adds over 30 new bandit campsites to the world of Skyrim, each with their own story. There's also new unique bandit NPCs in various highwaymen locations, so the rugged world of Skyrim will seem more dangerous and exciting with these additions. Up next, we have two of my favorite dungeon adding mods, and this is the Forgotten Dungeons and Easier Riders Dungeon Pack. This mod adds a combined total of 73 new areas to explore and dungeons to loot, all of which are lore friendly and seamlessly integrated into the world. 
And since we changed the bandit camps and the dungeons in Skyrim, it's important to also move over to the forts and pay attention to those too. Because the forts in Skyrim look as if they've been abandoned for 400 years. But with this next mod on our list, the Imperial Stone Forts of Skyrim mod, it aims to change that up a little with new structures and walls that have been built in the major forts of Skyrim. The walls and decorations will also dynamically change depending on which faction currently has ownership of the fort, so these forts will actually be new and remastered and actually reflect on what's going on in the war too. Next up on our list we have the Place of Power mod which carefully adds to the area around the Standing Stones, making for more interesting places. Features such as improved ruins, more clutter, and books with a backstory have been added to these. After that we have the ESO Sky Shards mod which is pretty much a direct port of the Sky Shards from Elder Scrolls Online into Skyrim. This places several shards throughout the providence of Skyrim, including the Dawnguard areas in Solstheim, and much like the ones from the Elder Scrolls Online itself, once you collect three of these shards, you'll earn a perk point to spend as you see fit. With there being six shards in each section of the world for a total of 66 shards, you can amount to up to 22 extra perk points, which will actually get you farther into Ordinator because there's so many more perks to choose from now. Now we can move on to our lighting mods, and first up we have the Enhanced Light and Effects mod, which has a goal to create a more dramatic and realistic mood to Skyrim's lights by adding lights to all the light sources and removing any light without a source. As well as the addition of many more effects like smoke and volumetric light effects, this mod greatly enhances the lighting whenever it comes to the interiors and exteriors, but we're not done there. We also have the ELFX Hardcore mod up next, which darkens the interiors even more and removes the light and ambient color from all the dungeons not inhabited by humans. So you pretty much have to bring a torch or a candlelight spell to be able to see in caves, which I think is the most realistic part about this list here. Closing off our lighting mods with two little patches here, we have the ELFX No Fake Light Underdoors as well as the Magical College of Winterhold patch. The No Fake Light Underdoors just makes it so you can't see light from the other side of a door because in the original ELFX you were able to actually see a glowing light from underneath every door and it was kind of unrealistic. This mod just fixes it so you no longer see that. And then the Magical College of Winterhold patch just makes it so the Magical College of Winterhold and ELFX will run together properly and have no issues. Now we can start talking about the looting mods in this list. And what better way to start off than the Animated Clutter SSE mod? This mod adds animations to several objects that the player is able to interact with, but originally would have no animation. An example of this would be a knapsack because it doesn't have a closing or opening animation, now it does with this mod. It also covers the common barrels, the thieves guild caches, wrapped dragger, orc end tables, noble chests, swimmer dressers, trap doors, imperial well entrances, poor coffins, farmer chests, and even doors in the Windhelm Grey Quarters now animate while opening. So now with each container that you open, it's going to have its own unique animation, and it just makes the whole process of looting feel more realistic. And how can we talk about loot mods without adding the narrative loot mod to our list? This mod adds 1629 miscellaneous items to chests, pockets, and vendors, so whenever you go to open up a chest or barter with a merchant such as Belathor, you'll have a chance to find certain items added by this mod, such as new pottery, small furnishings, treasures, paintings, and more. You can even uncover rarities from a Dwemer or Falmer dungeon. Bandit chests will sometimes contain paintings which you can sell or rest on your shelves. Necromancers, Draugr, and Skeletons will drop bones and skulls and Civil War combatants might carry valuable missives. Now of course we can add new things for you to loot in Skyrim, but what about the stuff that already exists, such as the artifacts? Next up we have the Refined Artifacts mod, which improves artifacts and uniques without changing them into something very different. This mod covers Dawnbreaker, the Ruthful Axe, the Mask of Clavicus Vile, as well as the Savior's Hide, so that these artifacts will now be worthwhile to go out and look for because they're just so powerful now. A lot of you Oblivion fans as well as Assassin characters are going to love this next mod on our list, which is the Purification of Skyrim. This mod adds new poisonous apples to the game that you can actually convince people to eat based on your speechcraft skill. So once you do end up finding the recipe to craft these and you do craft them, if you are carrying a poisonous apple on your person, let's say you have a job from the Dark Brotherhood and they want you to go out and kill somebody, you can actually just approach your target and have a chance to persuade them into eating the apple right in front of you. It then takes a couple seconds for it to start reacting, so you can make a clean getaway before anyone even saw you. This mod opens up a ton of new ways to play, especially if you're playing through the Dark Brotherhood. Following that we have the Get Immersive Cheats as well as the Get Immersive Merchant Cheats mods, which are two mods that go hand in hand to make the game a little bit easier to play, but in a way that really makes sense. You can get mammoth tusks from mammoth skulls that you find out in the wild now, you can get firewood from wood piles, loot from crates, and also more loot or alchemy ingredients from burial urns, corpses, and barrels. 
And then the merchants cheat side of this, it also doubles the gold merchants and fences have to buy your stuff. And it also gives you more fences that you can sell your stolen goods to, even if you haven't completed multiple thieves guild quests. It also adds magic staves and hoods to merchandise sold by wizards and merchants sell rare and unique items now that you can find. And speaking of merchants, up next we have the Merchant Chests on Display mod, which is a very simple mod that takes all of the chests that contain the vendor inventories that were originally placed under the map or out of reach of the player into the shop itself and behind their counter. This makes it so if you're playing as a thief character and you want to actually storm a shop and steal all the stuff out of it, you no longer have to just worry about the stuff that's on display. You can actually get behind the counter and into the person's inventory, and you can steal directly from the merchant, which I think is a lot more realistic if you're playing a thief character who steals from merchants. Moving on, we have the Better Pelt Prices mod, which makes it so the pelts and hides sell for a higher price and produce extra leather to make hunting more worthwhile now. Now you may have noticed earlier when we were covering the armor mods that we forgot two sets of armor. Those are the Imperial and the Stormcloaks. We didn't seem to get them, but that's where we come in here with the Amidian Born Civil War Armory, and we cover those armors with new 2K textures so they look nice and remastered for whenever you go into war. The reason why we put it this low in the list and not with the rest of our armors is because there's another mod in this list that alters the armors for them, so if you have it any higher up, your Imperials will have a mixed matched armor set and it doesn't look right. Now we can move on to our difficulty enhancing mods, and starting us off we have Elegy, the difficulty and balance overhaul, which aims to craft a more rewarding, balanced, and immersive Skyrim experience whilst making minimal changes and maintaining as much of the vanilla gameplay and vision as possible. A few of these changes are a crafting experience overhaul that involves less spamming and better perk allocations, as well as a skill rate adjustment, meaning that earlier levels are harder to gain and later levels are easier, but the same experience is required overall. There's completed crafting and temping recipes, overhauled alchemy and food, a decreased carry weight, as well as harder bartering and fast-paced combat. And you're also going to want to pick up a couple add-ons to this elegy difficulty and balance overhaul, such as the Mist Crafting Experience add-on and the Restoration Potion Duration, which allow you to gain experience from crafting activities such as tanning, smelting, and carpentry. And then the Restoration Potion Duration makes it so that every single time you drink a potion, whether it be health, magic, or stamina, it now acts over a period of a few seconds rather than instantly. Lastly, we'll pick up the Ordinator Patch for Elegy just so that everything runs together properly and you have no incompatibilities. Now it's time we talk combat, and what better way to start off a conversation like that than by adding the Wildcat Combat of Skyrim mod to your list. This mod changes the combat styles and combat AI to make opponents much more relentless and decisive. And with this AI, you're going to have a lot more difficult battles as well as have a new injury system like there is in Fallout where you can cripple limbs now. You can have your limbs crippled as well as cripple other people's limbs, and there's an arm injury, a chest injury, a head injury, leg and spine injuries as well. Following that we have the Violin's Kill Move mod, which gives you in-game control over both ranged and melee kill moves, giving you much more kill move customization than you've ever had before. You can also make it so kill moves happen not just at the end of battle, it can also happen in the middle, and there's just so much that you can change that you can have any type of combat scenario that you want. After that we have the True Dragonborn Heavy version, which makes it so whenever you absorb a Dragon Soul, you also gain several of the Dragon's attributes, such as Health, Magicka, and Stamina. And then the more souls that you gain without spending them on other things, you'll get to keep these points, and these stats will actually start stacking on each other. For each dragon soul absorbed, you get a 3 in carrying capacity, as well as 5 to health, magic, and stamina. And then whenever you reach 10 dragon souls, you get resistances such as disease, fire, frost, shock, and magic. And if you're brave enough to acquire 100 dragon souls, you get a plus 300 in carrying capacity, plus 30% damage resistance, as well as 500 points into health, magic, and stamina as a huge bonus. Not only can we become a true dragonborn later in the game, but we can also become a very powerful vampire with the Sion Vampire Overhaul. This is a streamlined overhaul designed to improve gameplay of vampires and vampire lords because vanilla vampirism is neither deep nor engaging. Its passives and greater powers are weighted towards stage 4, meaning the quickest way to level up is to simply ignore vampirism entirely. This mod changes that so that the four stages of vampirism are designed to make both stage 1 and stage 4 desirable for different builds. 
And how could anyone forget about the werewolves in Skyrim, so let's add Lupinus to our list up next. This mod includes naturally occurring werewolves that you can find throughout the world of Skyrim with AI. This werewolf AI makes them a lot more predatorial, and they hunt at night and will kill anything in their path, so you have to be careful if you're going to stumble across one at a low level. This also increases the werewolf speed as well, so the werewolves are a lot faster and can chase you down, and you can also get the disease that turns you into a werewolf without doing the companion's quest line. If you happen to stumble across a werewolf in your travels and let it hit you a few times, and then later turn into a werewolf yourself. Up next we have the Sneak Tools mod, which adds new gameplay features and mechanics to sneaking. These include sneaking up behind enemies to cut their throats, you can now extinguish and reignite flames with new fire and water arrows that have been added, you can now distract and make traps for enemies with oil and noisemaker arrows, and even knock out enemies instead of killing them. And after that we have IA-92's Enchanting Without Restrictions, which allows you to put any enchantment that you would want on jewelry, clothes, shields, hoods, and boots, because in the original game it only lets you put 4 enchantments on apparels. Now you can put your desired enchantments on all 7 pieces instead of just 4. Up next we have the updated Mine Markers mod, which is a simple change to your map that makes it so all of the Mine Markers actually have the name of the ore that's found there next to their name. For example, if you discovered Ember Shard Mine, you would see Ember Shard Mine, and then in parentheses it would say Iron. Now we can start talking about our crafting mods, and starting us off we have the Smeltdown update, which is almost an exact copy of how Fallout 4 works. You know how in Fallout 4 if you'd go out and you'd find all the junk and just the scrap that originally had no use in the game, you can then bring it back to your settlement and scrap it down for parts for your armor and weapons, now you can actually do that in Skyrim now. You can walk up and take plates, jugs, and other miscellaneous items that otherwise would have no use, bring it over to the smelter, and actually smelt it down and use it into your weapons and crafting. And since we're going to be getting a whole bunch of new materials with the smelt on update, it's also important to grab the craft everything mod too, because this makes every non-unique piece of clothing, armor, and weapon craftable. This was a focus on roleplay and utility, so if you can't find a pickaxe, simply make one, and vice versa with every other item that you may find in the game. Up next we're going to add the Vanity Mirror mod, which adds an equipable inventory item to the game, which is a handheld mirror, that will open the limited race menu and allow you to make changes to your appearance anytime and anywhere. All this without messing with your skills or perks, and it's craftable at a forge under the jewelry section, and all you need is some firewood, leather strips, and glass. Up next we have our final crafting mod, which is the Mystic Condenser, which allows you to combine two or more potions, poisons, or filled soul gems of the same type into one or more of their higher level counterparts, with no loss of efficiency. For example, if I have three standard potions of healing, I can upgrade those to two potions of plentiful healing, and then later on if I get more of those, make a vigorous potion of healing. Next we can move on to updating the lakes, rivers, and oceans of Skyrim with the Realistic Water 2 mod. This is a huge water overhaul that changes all of the bodies of water in Skyrim to have new and remastered textures and animations, and on top of that we can add the Better Water for Realistic Water 2 which is a mod on top of a mod which contains 5 new normal maps that improve the overall realism of Skyrim's waters without any cost to performance. Finally we're going to pick up the Better Water Color and Transparency mod for Realistic Water 2 because it adjusts the color and transparency of Realistic Water 2 to make it look less like blue ink and more like water itself. Next up we have the Color Patches Remover, which is a very simple mod that just gets rid of those pesky orange squares that you sometimes discover when exploring. Up next we have one of my favorite role-playing mods of all time, the Alternate Start Live Another Life mod. What this mod does is it provides an alternative means to start the game for those who don't want to go through the entire lengthy intro sequence at Helgen. Instead, whenever you load up the game and press New Game, you'll be given the opportunity to immediately choose your race and then choose a life for your new character to lead. You also have a wide variety of choices available, I always like to spawn as a patron at an inn, but you can also start into a guild, you can start as a bandit or maybe a beggar, and then on top of that you have the New Beginnings Live Another Life, which is an add-on to the alternate start. There's a bunch of new starts included with this add-on as well that allow you to be an addict in a skooma den, an adventure in a dwemer ruin, an alchemist camping in the wilderness, as well as you being attacked by a dragon right away or being thrown into jail. There's so many different ways that you can start the game with the alternate start mod that you can pretty much create any type of story or character that you've wanted to from the ground up. Following that we can grab the Destroy the Thieves Guild mod which does exactly what you may think, it just allows you to destroy the Thieves Guild because I always thought it was weird in the vanilla game of Skyrim how you could destroy the Dark Brotherhood, but you can never take a trip over to the Thieves Guild and take care of them too. And do you wish your Righteous Warrior could just wipe them out? Do you ever feel left out if you ignore the questline of the Thieves Guild? Or do you just want them plain dead for some reason? Well now you have the chance. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why would you miss out on all the good loot that you get from the Thieves Guild? 
Well, the thing about that is this mod actually works around that and compensates for you losing all that stuff because it adds many minor quests to obtain the loot that you would normally miss out on by not joining the guild after you wipe them all out. So the quest doesn't just end once you wipe out the Thieves Guild, it starts an entirely new quest line to obtain the other objects that you would have gotten if you played through the right way. After that we have the Missives mod which adds missive boards to the nine hold capitals in Skyrim. There you can find a number of different radiant quests of varying difficulty, and the quests will only lead to dungeons or NPCs in their own hold and the missives will have information detailing where the quest leads to or what you need to collect. The type of quests you can get from this board include courier quests, gather quests, kill quests, and retrieve quests, and with all the variations and different holds taken together, this mod contains a grand total of 210 new radiant quests to do. Moving on, we have the Run For Your Lives mod, which is a mod that was born out of the frustration at seeing citizens all over Skyrim try to be a hero rushing headfirst to their doom in dragons and vampire attacks. Instead, citizens will not run to safety like smart people would when being attacked by a dragon or vampire, and I just feel like it makes the citizen's AI a little bit more realistic in that sense. And after that, we can pick up the Better Intimidation mod, which changes all the dialogue options for intimidations to sound a lot better, mean, and deserved. And how can you be intimidating if you're not looking the NPC straight in the face? So that's why we follow this mod up with the head tracking fully scripted version, which makes it so whenever you're talking to an NPC or maybe just standing near one, your guy's character will actually look towards that NPC. This makes cutscenes, interactions, as well as just regular third person play to feel a lot more real because your character doesn't just look like a robot staring off into space. Up next we have the Realistic Conversations mod, which removes that long pause in between each sentence whenever NPCs are talking, and they'll actually talk like people should do now. Every social logic in Skyrim for NPCs changed with this mod so that they talk more often to others and will less likely greet you from a distance. And speaking of conversations, you're going to be having a lot more of those with the More to Say mod, which is up next here on our list. More to Say adds inconsequential dialogue to NPCs, constructed from the NPC greetings and miscellaneous lines from the same voice type. It adds miscellaneous dialogue with Whiterun, Riverwood, Shorestone, and Karthwiston NPCs. It's fully voiced using the original game files so that the player can repair the relationship between Sven and Feindel after the lovely letter side quest is complete. There's also a few additional miscellaneous side quests to do around Whiterun. You can now brawl with Nazim just because he's annoying you. Trust me, this mod covers a lot, especially in Whiterun and Riverwood. You'll feel like a real resident there if you spend some time there because of just how many new conversations you can have with the NPCs. Now that we've covered the conversations that we have with NPCs in the game, how about the conversations that we have with our followers? That's where the relationship dialogue overhaul comes in next with over 5,000 new lines of completely voiced dialogue for NPCs for more than 50 voice types. This focuses mainly on friends, followers, spouses, and rivals, and all this dialogue is completely voiced using the original files from the game, so nothing seems out of place. Followers and allies are a lot more positive and will have much more to say instead of only recognizing you as a friend every 12 hours, and they actually have idle comments as well for all the follower voices, so this mod covers a lot in terms of dialogue. You also want to follow that up with the RDO USS EP patch, which just makes it so the relationship dialogue overhaul works properly with the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. Next up we have the underwhelming multiple follower mod, the default version, which simply just increases the follower cap from 1 to 3 so you can now have a group of followers instead of just one. You're also going to want to get the UMF USS EP compatibility patch, which makes it so the underwhelming multiple follower mod works with the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition mod, and then also underneath that you're going to get the UMF RDO compatibility patch, so that the underwhelming multiple follower mod works with the relationship dialogue overhaul with no issues at all. After that we have an amazing mod called Immersive Speechcraft. What this mod does is it adds some value to the speech skill and provide the player with the ability to interact with NPCs in interesting ways. Based on your character's speech skill, you might be able to convince an NPC to follow you a bit, barter, or even help you in combat. The features of this mod include being able to approach an NPC and start a conversation with them, where you can ask them to follow you, barter, command, gift, beg, trick, fight, comment on the weather, or even mug them. There's so many things that you can do and this happens to every NPC now so that you won't just walk up to an NPC and click on them and they won't just say, need something. You'll actually be able to have a full conversation with them based on your speech skill and I really love that. And last but not least, the final mod that we have in this huge load order is the FPS Eternal mod. 
This is one of my favorite FPS mods because it makes Skyrim run extremely smooth, especially with 150 mods running at once. We're going to need an FPS mod, and this is the best one to do it. And that is it. That is all 150 mods in this huge RPG load order, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the mods that I've picked out for this list. And the only thing that you have to do now is just restart your console and start a new game and you're good to go. I also want to say that I'm very confident in my placement and testing of these mods so that you won't have any problems whatsoever whenever you're playing through the game. But then again, Skyrim is Skyrim, so if you have any questions or problems with this load order, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to help you guys out the best that I can. And if you did enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new, it really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for load orders you'd like me to cover in the future or just mods you'd like me to check out, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later.